that the attendance is fantastic. That's that's excellent, and um, and that students are fully focused. Hey guys, why don't we make a uh, a quick clip for um for the young students just taking them through the Simone Hasada? Start with Kaddish. So we all know that on Pesach, when we make Kiddish, it's not just one person who makes it, it's everyone. And that means that everyone is a leader on Seder night. And especially this year, when we're going to be having smaller Sadarim, we're going to need to step up more than ever. And I know that every student who's been in any of our classes will be 100% prepared to be making Kiddish at Kaddish as though they are the leader of their Seder. Or cuts. So at the Seder, you might be used to washing your hands with hand sanitizer and soap these days. But at the Seder in Orchatz, make sure that you wash your hands as you would for Hamotzi, three times on the right, three times on the left. Don't say a proper. Karpas. So karpas is one of those strange things. What is it? We take this vegetable and we dip it into salt water. So we know that the word karpas actually appears one other time in Tanakh. We have the word karpas that comes in the Megillah. We say, Chor karpasu t'cheles. And Chor karpasu t'cheles, karpas there are the wool, the wool tapestries that we have that Achashverosh had on the wall at the Suda, at the big Suda that he had. When we take the karpas, we actually are reminding ourselves of the wool, someone else's wool, the coat of Yosef Atzadik, that the brothers went and they took the coat and they dipped it in the blood. And the reason why we dip the karpas in the salt water is how we got into Mitzrayim, how we got into Egypt in the first place. We got into Egypt in the first place because unfortunately we did not have the right love for one another. And if we remind ourselves of why we got into this problem and how we're going to try and fix this problem by having achdut, by having unity amongst all Jews. Yachatz. So yachatz is we take the middle matzah and we break the middle matzah. And many have the custom that after we break the middle matzah, the father hides the matzah to the side and then the child goes and snatches the matzah. I'm sure this is what many of you are going to do. They're going to snatch the matzah and hide it away for the afikoma. And the question And to go and take things that the parents are not going to know where it is and they're going to have to try and find it later. And the answer is yes. On Seder night, it's your night. You have to make sure you keep your parents' attention and your parents look out for you throughout the whole of Seder. And if not, you're going to make sure they don't go to bed until the Afikoman is found because they're going to keep you there right to the end because they know they have to eat the Afikoman before they can finish the Seder. Magid. So Magid, I think, is if I'm allowed to have a favorite, is the favorite because it's the heart and soul of the entire setter. Because the whole setter night is about continuing and passing on the story to the next generation. And although every night we are mentioning Yitzhak Mitzrayim, tonight is special because we do it with Q&A. And when you have a question, then the answer has a stronger effect. And we also begin we begin with the bad things and we end with the good things because it's not just mentioning we get out of Mitzrayim. It's actually there was a story. There was a plot. You know, we were stuck in Egypt. And then when we appreciate it, when we understand the difficulty, we can appreciate the redemption. So Bezrat Hashem, we all have, it's, it's, it's not just thinking about the past, it's bringing the past back to life. And may we all Bezrat Hashem be able to do that uh, and have a very powerful effect with the beautiful Magi this year. Brachza. This time, when we wash our hands, we make sure to say a bracha afterwards. Now, when we washed our hands for karpas, we called it urchat, an imperative meaning and wash. Now, though, we call our hands rachza, which is a general term washing. So why do we alter it? Rav Cook explained that the earlier washing of our hands was for the individual to remove the impurity before handling food. However, this washing of our hands serves a different purpose. Now when we wash our hands, we're washing it to represent the end of the slavery, as described in Magid. So this is a national washing, and so we alter the name to Oh, Motzi Matzah. Motzi Matzah. Oh my goodness, is that flying matzah behind me? What a crazy world we live in. Okay, Motzi Matzah, we eat the matzah. Now this is crazy. In terms of different types of mitzvot that we do, 
we wrap some mitzvot. We sometimes we have to light a mitzvah. Sometimes we read something. Sometimes we say something or we sound something in shul. There's only one mitzvah that we actually ingest, that we actually consume, and that is matzah. It's the only specific command in the Torah of a mitzvah that we ingest. And what are we ingesting? We're ingesting emuna. Emuna is a very special component of Pesach, where we have trust that Hashem is looking after us, that He cares for us, and we're actually taking all these beautiful ideas, these these concepts of emuna and bitachon, and we are eating it. We're ingesting it. It's becoming the very lifeline of 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 us. Motzi matzah. Maror. I got given the bitter pill. So maror on night of Pesach, we have to take a kazai maror and eat it, horseradish or uh, romaine lettuce, make sure you wash it before, and we make a special varacha. Interestingly, we take the maror and we dip it in the car- dip it in the haroset. The maror is to remember the bitterness. But we do do something to try and remove a little bit of bitterness by dipping it into haros. We have to shake it off afterwards. And I just must say to you that in these difficult times that we are um, away from our large families and it's quite difficult, we likewise need to find some positive aspect, some sweet aspect, as I've found here with this gorgeous little fellow who's staying with us, some sweet aspect of uh, our situation. And with that, Miyotz Hashem, the avdut lecherut and to healthy times and good times. Korech. So if you think about it, during Maror, we didn't lean because that's bitter. And all of a sudden, Korech, we take the same Maror, we put it together with Matzah and we dip it in Haraset. And now we do lean. So what's the difference? So one of my teachers taught me that as Rav Asulan said, matzah is, sorry, as Rav Gold said, matzah is emuna is faith. And when you put faith with suffering, suddenly the suffering becomes something that you can live with. And Viktor Frankl once said that suffering is pain minus meaning, which means that if you have meaning and you can find meaning in the pain, then the suffering is reduced. And that's what happens when we couple emuna, matzah, together with maror, we're now able to lean because we have meaning even in the suffering that we face. Shulchan Orech, everybody's favorite part of the Pesach Seder. It's the time when we get to eat the festive meal, but it's also a very significant um, part of the Pesach Seder. As we know, the whole experience of Pesach is supposed to be a taste of redemption, a taste of what real freedom is like, and what better way to taste freedom than with a beautiful bowl of warm chicken soup. Tzafun. In Tzafun, we go to the door to greet Eliyahu and Avi, and we also say the very perplexing Shvuch Chamatcha, which actually adds a bit of a sad or negative note after the high of uh, the Seder up until now. What's that all about? The answer is Tzafun, we're supposed to be eating the Korban Pesach, and so we go to the door to See if Eliyahu and Avi is there to tell us that Mashiach has come and we will be able to eat the Korban Pesach. And then, if indeed he doesn't come, that's when we have a moment of sadness and pain and allow space for that and say the Shvach Barach. Barach is the blessings after the meal. Why is benching after food a mitzvah to a writer, a biblical command, when making a bracha before food is a mitzvah de rabbanan, a rabbinical command. The answer is, but it's much about Hashem, to think about gratitude when you're full, when you have what you need. So at the time when we're most likely to forget about Hashem, that's exactly when we need to remember Him. It's when we need to thank Him, and we need to know that everything we have is from Him, Hashem. Am I halal? Halal. So halal starts in the most. Tom, why don't you Am take I up? Halal?
Are you Hallel? <laughs> I can't hear you. You're on. I'm on. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Tell us about Hallel. Hallel. Okay, I'm sorry. Well, I'm sure we'll hear from your your idea about Hallel as well very quickly. So there's something strange about Hallel in that we actually split up Hallel. We say the first part of Hallel after Magid, and then we say the rest of it later in its own section of Hallel. And the question is, why do we say part of it earlier in Magid? Because once Magid's not just about telling the story, it's about experiencing it at that moment. It's about reading it and feeling a part of it and giving thanks to Kodesh Baruch Hu. But the question is, why do we split up Hallel? We do one half and then we do the later half on its own. So the Abarbanel explains that the first two prakim of Hallel that we say earlier are specifically about Yitziat Mitzrayim. They deal specifically with Yitziat Mitzrayim, and therefore we say them connected to, uh, to Magid. However, the later parts of Hallel are about the future redemption, are about what's going to happen. And we say Hallel over what's going on now, our gratitude for, for now and also for the future, and that's a tension that exists in, in Pesach and in the Seder all the time. On one hand, we give thanks to Kodesh Baruch Hu for what happened before, but we also use this as an opportunity to pray for the future redemption may come speedily and in our days. Okay, Nirza, if you've gotten to this point, you're doing pretty well in our video, but also if you've gotten to this point in the Seder, you're doing well too. If you're still awake at this point, it's time for us to reflect on how we've gone through the Seder and we've done an amazing job. And we are basically saying to Hashem that we've done all that we can. Now, Lashana Habab Yerushalayim. Now you need to make us next year in Yerushalayim, hopefully this year. And so too, within ourselves, it's time for reflection, not only on our Seder night, but also within our own selves. Because when Hashem created us, He created us with a soul, with a Neshama that is imperfect. And we have, tr that is perfect. And obviously, sorry, Hashem. But over time, Things happen, and we are trying to say to Hashem at this moment, we've done all that we can. You've brought us a Geula once before in Mitzrayim. Now it's time to bring us the final and ultimate Geula. May it happen speedily in our days. And, and then, if you've reached the end of the Haggadah, you'll notice that there are a series of songs, and you might think, oh, songs. Well, they're just songs, but you need to realize those songs are very, very deep. And the most famous of them all, the last song of the entire Haggadah, which is called Chad Gadya, and you're all familiar with what that's about. That's one of the deepest pieces of Jewish literature, and a very long and big commentary was written on it by no less than Elijah the Gaon of Vilna, who thought that song was important enough that he showed how that song illustrates the whole of Jewish history and that the goat represents the birthright that was given from Avraham to Yitzhak to Yaakov and passed down to the Jewish people, which our father Jacob purchased for and that birthright was eaten by the cat, which was the jealousy of the brothers of Yosef. And then they went down into Egypt, and Egypt is the dog. And eventually the dog was beaten by the stick, by the staff of Moshe. And we came out, and we went into the land of Israel, but then the stick became burnt by fire. And the fire was the passion for Avodah Zarah, for idol worship, which ultimately destroyed the temple until that fire was quenched by water, the water of the Torah as it developed in Bayat Sheni to produce eventually the Mishnah and the other the Midrash and the other great teachings of Chazal. And then that water was unfortunately drunk by an ox. That ox represented Rome and not just Rome, but all of the other nations that have persecuted and oppressed the Jewish people in their long exile. And eventually explains the Gaon of Vilna that ox will be slaughtered by a shochet. That shochet is the Mashiach, the son of Yosef, who comes and takes the Jewish people and puts them in the land of Israel with their full sovereignty. But even Mashiach ben Yosef himself is eventually killed 
by the Malach HaMavid who comes just before Mashiach to create the conditions by which the messianic redemption can eventually come and that is a Karosh Baruch Hu who comes with Mashiach ben David and speedily in our times as all the other teachers have reiterated may that happen this Pesach and may next year we all meet at a big large corona free Pesach in Yerushalayim Amen we love you stay safe and have a Chag Kasher V'Sameach